it's time to talk about augmented reality. Please join me in welcoming futurist, author, Forbes columnist, Charlie Fink. And Charlie will be giving a book signing at booth 725 at 12.30. At 12.30, compliments of Technicolor. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for having me. This is a speed keynote. Um, AR is very hot right now, as we know, and I'll uh, talk about the reasons for that and the implications of that. But let's not forget that this is VRLA. And I, one of the first things I did in my career in the early 90s was I ran a company called Virtual World that was doing location-based entertainment. And of course, we thought that was the future of computing until the internet came along and changed everything. Uh, and I got to see the internet from the inside, the development of the internet from the inside as well. And um, so here I am in the third act of my career writing about a lot of the businesses and topics that I worked on. And that forms a filter that I use when looking at VR and looking at AR. Um, first of all, technology succeeds when it takes what we're already doing and makes it better in the same way that the internet enabled Amazon, and Amazon became e-commerce, and e-commerce is a killer app. But the real killer app of all of our devices, of the smartphone in our pocket, or the PC on our desk, is to connect us with other people. And then finally, and I think this is sort of where we are with both VR and AR, is that uh, we are uh, have inflated expectations because it's so exciting to contemplate what it's going to be. But the truth is we're going to get there in baby steps. So I wrote a book that reflects a lot of these ideas and in particular the ideas about um, VR and AR as completely different things. And the reason that I say that, they, of course they're both computer, head-worn computers ultimately, um, but their purpose and their origin is quite different. For virtual reality comes out of the tradition of cave paintings and campfire stories and Plato's cave and shadow play and the fantastic Baroque churches of the Middle Ages that immersed you in a holy world and from a world that was quite dirty and dangerous. And that tradition extended toward theater and ultimately dark rides and movies and television, anything for which we need to suspend our disbelief. One of the great epiphanies that Walt Disney had, and I think it's very, very relevant to VR today, is that he created Disneyland because he realized that people wanted to be inside the world of a movie. And he did that using the technology that he, of the time that he had. But the quest was immersion, man's quest for immersion. That is the essence of virtual reality. Augmented reality comes from a different place. Augmented reality is a tool. Started with the club and the wheel, and it includes the industrial revolution and the machine age, and now we have a computer age. All of these are making men better, faster, making life easier. The other point I want to make from the book, and this is very important for my uh, discussion right now of augmented reality is that uh, the fundamental idea here is now the camera is the interface. You're not looking down, you're looking up, you're looking out. So um, let me talk a little bit about the way my book works. My book is an augmented reality book about virtual and augmented reality. You take out your phone, you download the Think Metaverse app, and you point it at the cover, and it markers inside the book, and you see something like this. Hello, I'm Charlie Fink. I'm a futurist and the author of this book, which you can judge from its cover. It's full of AR fun like this. So keep your phone handy as you check out what's inside and join me on this journey. Let's dive in. <laughs> Let's have some fun. So that was done by Living Pop-Ups, who uh, has a booth here. In fact, in the Living Pop-Ups booth at 1230, I will be signing complimentary books. That's a $50 book uh, until supplies run out, courtesy of the Technicolor Experience Center. So let me talk a little bit about my augmented reality book and augmented reality in general. Um, 
there are two kinds of augmented reality that the camera can produce. Um, one is uh, where the camera, where the, it's called marker-based AR, and the cover is the marker, and it induces the image to stand up, and the image is anchored in what appears to be what is the real world. And then there's geolocated uh, data, which is essentially Pokemon Go, right? You find data, you know, in a certain geographical area, and the geolocation and the persistence of data in what we call an AR cloud uh, is one of the fundamental ideas behind augmented reality, right? AR and Kit and AR Core are enabling technologies that allow us to anchor, to detect space, surfaces and planes, so that we can anchor the data to a certain plane. But by themselves, when ARKit came out and we were all excited and started downloading ARKit apps, we were a little bit disappointed because there was no AR cloud and the augmented reality wasn't really augmenting anything. It was just appearing in our field of view. But where we're really going with augmented reality and with the camera as the interface is essentially a computer that sees the world, a universal visual browser, if you will. And that universal visual browser can act as Google for the real world and for geolocated content, provided, of course, that there's a universal visual browser and that it can tell us where data is. But today, you can now geolocate data, right? You could put a menu on a restaurant or a directory on a building, or how about notes from people on your social graph that are placed in geographic locations that you can access later? But for this to work, of course, we'll need a system of filters, because otherwise everything will be talking to you at once, right? Otherwise a building will be cluttered with graffiti and notes from your friends and menus and advertisements, and you would just turn it off and never use it, because that wouldn't be useful. What's useful in augmented reality is very specific things that augment the world and do it in a time and a way that you want so that it is contextual. Um, so there are different kinds of AR uh, that I want to bring your attention to. We talked about marker-based and persistent geolocation, uh, which is, as I said, a very, very important idea that we're going to be hearing a lot about. Uh, but the other thing that everybody associates AR with, and, and the reason it's often conflated, conflated with VR, is because of the head-mounted display. And I just wrote an article in Forbes about the most popular and the one area of augmented reality where big, big money, billions of dollars are being generated, and that is in industry, particularly manufacturing that requires handwork like wiring, where people are looking back and forth from a laptop to their uh, handwork. By putting a monocular display with the plans right here, it makes that process much faster, safer, and more accurate. And Boeing, just to use one example, now wires a jet, saves $10 million a jet on wiring because of these monocular head-mounted displays. But on the other hand, they're terrible, right? You would take them off as soon as you were done with work. Although the people who work with them value them highly, they are a tool. For consumers, augmented reality means something completely different. Right? So as I said, the world could be painted with data from different sources. Every object could be a marker that tells a story. In fact, there's an app today that can give you a taste of this called Blipper. You just hold down Blipper and it starts to identify things that the camera sees. Um, you talk about city guides. I mean, Batman could be your city guide to Gotham City and you would just follow him around. Of course, you would get paper hanger syndrome from doing this. You probably couldn't do it for very long as anybody who plays AR-enabled mobile games knows, but that means that the head-mounted display is all the more inevitable. And of course, one of my favorite applications is hold your phone up over the soccer game and see who's who. Hold your phone up over a baseball game and see the stats of the players. Now, I do want to talk about Magic Leap because, I, I mean, I don't know if this is going to be a consumer product in 2019 or ever, um, because a real augmented reality head-mounted display, for example, would have to use your prescription. It would have to have a much better form factor than this. Yet, I am grateful to Magic Leap because they have popularized this idea 
of the head-mounted display allowing us to lift up our heads from our hands, which is obviously a terrible form factor, and give us the world back, right? Let us now see the world that we keep looking away from and shifting our time. And let's have it be contextually aware so that when I look out on this audience, I will see who's in my, LinkedIn, my 4,000 LinkedIn friends. And, um, and maybe it just whispers your name to me, right? Maybe augmented reality isn't all about having, your, having to read a lot of crap in your field of view, which would be obviously um, you know, very annoying. You might want more information and you tap for it, but the initial information you get from augmented reality will be very specific, very light, and at the exact right moment. And those are some of the ideas that Magic Leap has popularized. Um, but, you know, consumers don't want to know what a field of view is. They, they don't want the headset like the Oculus Go to go out after an hour and a half, which is not very long battery life for something you want to wear all day. So head-mounted displays, a little bit of science fiction. I think we're, we're years away. And, and again, wearing headsets is not something that people are already doing for virtual or augmented reality. So that's, that's going to take a while. Let's, let's be real. Um, but in our hand today is a device that does augmented reality and is going to generate a lot of money and a lot of great experiences in the very near term. So that's why I say AR is so hot. It takes what we're already doing and makes it better. Remember when you had a flip phone and you went to Verizon or Sprint to get your new phone and they said, hey, would you rather have a phone that does email and surfs the internet? And you said, yes, please. So we are not at that moment for virtual reality, but we very much are for augmented reality because you didn't even have to say yes, please. Your phone just turned into an augmented reality device. So that's what's happening today. Don't forget about my book signing, 1230 Booth 725, complimentary books while they last, courtesy of Technicolor. I thank you so much for listening to me, and thank you, VRLA, and I'll see you all next door.